In this video, I'll talk about the idea and the strategy behind the method of variational parameter that's used to solve this, a non-homogeneous second-order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. We'll first talk about the steps that we'll take. At the end, we'll come with a system of equations with two conditions, and that's pretty much the idea of using the variational parameter. And with that being said, here is step one. Step one is to find yh, and the h is the homogeneous situation, right? This means we have to solve the equation ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals to zero homogeneous situation. And this is supposed to be really easy to solve, right? You can just change that into the characteristic equation. So let's say the answers for this is y1, y2, right? The answers are y1 and y2, just like this, just like that. And now, step two, we have to find the particular solution, so that's yp. And now let's think about it. We have two solutions already, right? y1, y2. We have to find a new one. And by the way, we could have done this with undetermined coefficient. If f of t is sine cosine, or maybe exponential, or maybe polynomial, right? If you're willing to use the following method, in fact, you can deal with f of t being tangent and also maybe secant and whatsoever, right? So it's really cool right here. Anyway, we know two solutions already. How can we find a new one? Huh, this sounds like the method of reduction, isn't it? If I know y1 already, just think back to the method of reduction of water. Reduction of water, okay? You look at y1 and you multiply that by a function, and that's how you are going to produce the new function for the solution, right? So y1 will multiply this, say, d1, all right? But I also know y2 is a solution as well, so I'll put down y2. And let's multiply this by d2. d1, d2, they are both functions of t. And in fact, for yp in this case, this is equal to d1, y1, plus d2, y2. And this is very similar to the idea of reduction of waters. But this time, we know two solutions already to find a new one, yp in this case. We multiply the first one by another function, d1, and then you multiply by y2 with d2. And our goal is to find out what, y, what d1, d2s are. y1, y2 should be really easy. Anyway, we have this. This is just a general form. <laughs> we just have to differentiate this twice. Plug, <laughs> plug in and then see what we can get from there, right? Anyway, product rule, product rule. Let's get to work. First derivative right here. Y p prime, this is going to be, I will keep the first function, which is d1 times the derivative of the second, which is y1 prime, plus I will keep the second function, which is y1 times the derivative of the first, which is d1 prime, all right? And next up this, so I'm going to put it down here, I will add, I will keep d2, and I'll multiply by the derivative of the second, which is y2 prime, and then plus I'll keep y2, and multiply by the derivative of d2 prime. The derivative of v2, which is v2 prime, like this. Okay. Product rule, product rule, product rule, product rule, right? If you want to look at this and do the next step. But let me tell you, no, 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 no. Let's think about this before we continue. Okay, so here is the deal. If I just want to differentiate this, I will end up with a lot of things, right? Total of A things. Uh, I don't want to go through that. And this is a condition that we're going to impose right now. What I want to do is, I want to avoid the second derivative of this. Right here I see v1 prime, right here I see v2 prime. I want to avoid the second derivative of the v functions. So this is the condition I'm going to impose. I see this is what we have right here. y1 v1 prime, y2 v2 prime, right? They both have the the derivatives, right? Imagine if you look at this and differentiate this again, you end up with a second derivative for the fees, and you end up with like a second order differential equation instead of a second order <laughs> differential equation. So let's not do that. So this is the idea, this is the condition that I'm going to impose. Here is condition number one, all right? 
So I want to assume that this and that add up to be zero, so I can just ignore that. And yp will be just this and that. Yp prime will be just this and that. Okay. So condition one, let me write it down. I want to have y1 b1 prime plus y2 y2 b2 prime. This equals to zero. This is the first condition that I want to have. Okay. So let me box this right here. And because this is equal to zero now, right? So I can rewrite this for you guys. Y p prime is just equal to v one times y one prime plus v two times y two prime. That's y p prime. And now I can look at this and differentiate this again. I can get y p double prime, right? So let's get to work. This is slightly better. Okay. So I will keep the first function, v one times the derivative of the second, which is going to be y one double prime plus the second function, y one prime times the derivative of the first, which is v one prime. And now move to here. Let me add. I will keep the first function, which is v two differentiate the second, so y two double prime plus the second function, y two prime times the derivative of the first, which is v two prime. That's what we have for y p double prime. And I'm not going to impose any condition. I'm just going to look at this, look at that, and look at this, and plug in into the original. And now let's see what do we get from here. So I have a in the front right here times y double prime, which is this, right? And there's nothing I can do to combine the terms. And I will just put on all the fees first, if you guys don't mind. So let me write this down here. Let me multiply by v one y one double prime, and then we add. As I said, I want to put down all the v's first. So let me put down v one prime, y one prime, right? And then we have that, which is v two y two double prime, and then we also add this with v two prime. Y two prime, and this is that. What do we do next? B y prime, and remember now this is the y prime part, right? Because the y p prime is just this. We have this condition, so we're plugging this into the y prime, and let me just put it down below here. Plus b times this and that. It's not bad at all, and the fees are already in the front, so that's good. V one y one prime plus V two y two prime, okay. And now I will have to add C times y, and y is just this. So let's open the parentheses. V one y one plus V two y two, and now all together this is equal to what? F of t because we're looking at the original. Okay, and now. What do we do next? Let me talk about it. Of course, right? Here's the deal. I see that I have the y1 double prime, y1 prime. Okay, maybe. And then this is y1 prime, and this is y1. But if you focus on this part, this part, and this part, let me just underline this for you guys. This is v1 y1 double prime. This term also has the v1, right? This one is v1 prime. I don't want to look at this. V one, V one, and this is also V one. And then you see, this is Y one double prime, Y one prime, Y one. Let's put them together, and let's also factor out the V one. All right. And of course, don't forget you have to distribute, distribute, distribute. We will have to do that. Okay. And I will do this in black first. So I will say distribute, distribute, and distribute. I am going to factor out the v one first. So let's put this down in the front. We have the v one right here. I open the parentheses, and let's see. This v one is in the front already. I would like to put down a y one double prime right here for you guys. So a y one double prime, right? And next, you see, we took out the v one already. This is plus b times v one prime. So let's put down plus b y one prime. Likewise, for this term, we took out the v one already, so we have this and that plus c y one. That's it, right? 
And now next, we will just say that's add. Let's do the same thing here. Let's look for the y2s. I see that I have this b2 y2 double prime, and then b2 y2 prime, and then this is b2 y2. I don't want this because this right here has b2 prime. This is b2 b2 b2, so I can factor out the b2. Okay. So let me do that. Let's factor out the b2 first, and then I will do this times that, this times that, this times that. So a times y2 prime that will go here because the v2 is out already. So we will have a y2 double prime. And then this times that is plus b y2 prime. And likewise, this and that is just plus c y2. OK? All the v2s are out already. Lastly, what do we have? Well, I'll put this down in blue. Uh, so you can see, this is the remaining part, right, in blue. This and that. And don't forget, you have the A in the front. I'm not going to distribute it. Let me just put it down as how it is. A on the outside, so let me just put this down. Plus A on the outside, parentheses, V1 prime, Y1 prime. So that's right here. And then this is V2 prime, Y2 prime. And they are both inside. Right? That's what we have. And keep in mind, all this is still equal to f of t. Okay, so it's not bad because a lot of things have actually, you know, good pattern and uh, all the good things. Anyway, do we recognize what this is going to be? Well, what does y1 represent? Remember, y1 is a solution to the homogeneous equation, right? That means if you plug in y1 to here, here, and here, a y1 double prime plus b y1 prime plus c y1 shall be equal to zero, isn't it? So all this part is actually just equal to zero. And likewise, if you look at this right here, a, b, c, and we'll have the y2 prime, y2 prime. So this is y2 double prime, y2 prime, and this is y2. That situation, this will also give you zero, isn't it? And all in all, you just have this is equal to that, right? And now let me just write this down right here for you guys. We have a times v1 prime y1 prime plus v2 prime y2 prime. And this is equal to f of t. And of course, we can divide by a on both sides. So in another word, we will have this equals to f of t over a, in fact. That will be the second condition that we have to impose. But let me do two things right here. First of all, let me switch the water so I can match that. Okay? Let me put down y1 prime first and then the v1 prime. And then we add it with, let's put down the y2 prime and then the v2 prime. And this is equal to, as I said it, we divide by a on both sides. So on the right hand side, we'll just have f of t over a. Right? So we switch the water and also divide by a on both sides. And this right here is exactly condition two. Let me just indicate that. Condition number two. Okay? So all in all, what we want to do is we have to solve this system of equation, this condition and that condition. So let me just put this down right here. Whenever you are trying to do the variation of parameter method, what you have to remember is first condition, which is y1 v1 prime plus y2 v2 prime equals to zero. And the second condition is this. And you see we have the y1 prime and then the v1 prime. And you see this is the reason why I switched the water so I can light them out nicely, right? Plus y2 prime, and this is v2 prime, equals to f of t over a. From here, you should be able to solve for v1 prime and also v2 prime because this is just a system of equation. And y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime should be easy to get because it was easy to solve this, right? So you just have to put the functions here, here, and the derivatives here and here. And once you are able to solve for v1 prime and v2 prime, you can integrate to get. Uh, 
B1 and B2 and things like that. But anyway, here is the condition that I'm going to tell you. This is what we have to use. So step one, step two, this is the most important thing that we have to do. And of course, at the end, once you solve for YH and YP, the overall solution is just Y and as usual, you combine them together, YH plus YP. And this right here will be the solution to the original differential equation. And now you should watch my next video because I will show you guys a famous example of using this method.